my mother, she's probably the one that can make me feel the most low, as low as an ant, one can say. Because when my words and my actions don't line up, she lets me know. If I am at one time not willing to forgive as quickly as I should, she says, ah, and you call yourself the priest, huh? Ah, you talk about forgiveness all the time, but you can't do it yourself. Boy, do I feel low. Because at that moment, my words and my actions just don't connect. In today's gospel, it appears as if the Jewish authorities can't connect Jesus' words with his actions. They can understand, and they even say, look, we are the thought about stoning him wasn't for the works that he was doing. Jesus indeed performed many, many miracles, great numbers of healings. He brought sight to the blind. He was able to make those who were deaf to hear. He was able to, to uh, for those who were lame to walk, and so much more. And those actions were not, for the Jewish authorities, the reasons for stoning, but rather the words. For them, they believed that Jesus' words and his actions couldn't come together in a way that they, they did not match how wrong they were. Because Jesus' words and his actions indeed matched. Jesus talked about the love of God, how God wanted the human being to be fully whole, to be renewed. And therefore, whenever he saw one suffering, he brought the peace and compassion of Jesus. Yes, indeed, Jesus' words and his, and his actions did match. But even as we hear in today's gospel, the, the distinction that the Jewish authorities made between his actions and his words even happens today in the church. How many times do we hear of people complaining about the church's words but have no problem about its actions? Sometimes they don't even know the wonderful actions, the wonderful actions of the church, universal, and what it does. It's there, in a way, it's there in the front lines the church is through many religious brothers and sisters, through priests, through missionaries, through lay men and women giving their lives to help the poor. How much we as a church are involved in the AIDS crisis. We're in the forefront. But we don't hear that. We don't hear about what we do as a church, our actions, and the wonderful things we do. Rather, people begin to complain about the words. They say and they feel that there is no match between our words and actions, and so they're against the church when we talk about issues like abortion or same-sex marriage or about homosexuality. They say, oh, the church is not in line. They begin to look at the words and not the actions. And just as Jesus' words and actions did match, so the church's words and actions do match. We hold to our stance in abortion and same-sex marriage and homosexuality because of the words that we believe. Because we hold the human person with great dignity and therefore honoring it from the very beginning of life conception until God returns that individual to himself in his own time, in his own way. You know, even recently I found a copy about the, uh, the, the new, we hear about this new deadly sins that the Vatican has come. De new? Come on. It talks about the environmental pollution. And for some, they hear that and they think it's new for the church. We've been talking about it all the time. We've been talking about how this earth belongs to all of us and how it is our responsibility to take care of it. Not nothing new for us, but new for those who see it sometimes in our actions. They talk about uh, genetic manipulation, manipulation. That's nothing new. We've been talking about it with this new, this new technology. As it begins, we have to reflect on it as a church or the accumula accumulation of excessive wealth. These seven new deadly sins that we hear and the others that I haven't mentioned, it's not new. 
It only is a reflection of already our actions and our words. You know, um, for us as Catholics, we also have to reflect on how each and every one of us, how our actions and our words match up. Because although the church's words and actions do match up, sometimes individually it doesn't. Sometimes we can all be brought down low, either by a parent like a mom, or a spouse, or even a child, reminding us of who we are as Christians. And so I would say to all of us in regards to what people think for some, a new sin about the, uh, being conscious of the environment, I would say for all of us to reflect maybe on that and say, if we have not thought about it before, then to ask ourselves, do we take a cup maybe from one of the local uh, coffee shops and after we are finished and maybe after we've rolled up the rim and realized there's nothing to have been found there, do we take it and throw it on the floor? Maybe what we should have, instead of play a game, we should have put this in the garbage, in the proper place. That might be more helpful. And it might remind us that if we throw something, then we're not being really Christ-like. We're not taking care of the environment that is ours. May we, in our lives, all of us, continue to reflect on our words and our actions and may it match. Let us now offer our petitions before the Lord, knowing and trusting that he always hears us. Let us pray for our Holy Father, Pope Benedict, for our Bishop, Thomas Collins, and all bishops, priests, and deacons, consecrated religious men and women, that they may continue to live their faith in word and action, we pray to the Lord. Let us pray that our world may continue to be a place where we and the future generations can experience the joys of its gift, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our Let us pray for those who have asked for our prayers at this Eucharist, that the Lord may heal them, that the Lord may respond to their needs, we pray to the Lord. Lord let us pray for our personal needs that the Lord only hears. For these personal needs, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayers. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of loving your Son, Jesus, he who is Lord, forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash with my iniquity and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that this, our sacrifice, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good and good God of mercy, may the gifts we present at your altar help us to achieve eternal salvation. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. 